Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to fix parity on any Rubik's Cube. Okay, so the first I'm going to show you, let's say you are um, solving a 4x4. You are sure you have F2L done, but then when you look at OLL, you see one edge is flipped. And that is actually not possible on a normal 3x3. You can have two edges solved on a 3x3. But you cannot have only three edges solved. You can either have zero, two, or four on OLL. And when you get to something like this, this is called OLL parity. And um, to solve this, we have to use a special algorithm that actually breaks the centers, which is why this is not possible on a normal three by three. So this algorithm is 15 moves long. And you might know the algorithm already, but you might not, but you can actually use this algorithm for any kind of cube. So I'm going to go through the algorithm as I fix OLL parity. So I'm just going to turn these two layers and not these ones because I don't want it to mess up any of the 3x3 three three stage. So just these layers, just the middle layers. This algorithm is R prime U2 L F2 L prime F2 R2 U2 R U2 R prime U2 F2 R2 F2 And now you have a normal case. I actually got V perm there, but now you have a normal case of either OLL or PLL on a 3x3 and you can just solve it like normal. Okay, so um, I actually explained this algorithm in the 4x4 and 5x5 tutorial I have. I just don't really have time to make a 6x6 tutorial and I feel like if I'm gonna make one, it shouldn't be the beginner method, it should be um, a more advanced method. So I'm gonna have probably have that up in a few weeks or I don't know when anytime I don't know but I actually explained that algorithm in the 4x4 tutorial and that is the same parity you can get on a 2x2x4 so you are let's say I use a method that's a little bit different so I would solve the top and bottom and in the middle layer but when you're solving the middle layer there's a chance you could get one edge flipped and this is the same parity as you can get on a 4x4 and to solve this, you use the exact same algorithm. Just make the moves a little bit different because the 4x4 has two layers and the 2x2x4 only has one. So how we're going to solve this algorithm is we're going to just turn these layers. Don't turn both these layers at once because it will mess these up and you don't want that. Alright, so if you just turn these layers... It's the same as the 4x4 algorithm, so R prime U2 L F2 L prime F2 R2 U2 R U2 R prime U2 F2 R2 F2 and that solves the 2x2x4. So really, you would like get that parity when you have like one more edge to solve or something. And that same method works for a 5x5. So let's say you are solving the edges on the 5x5. You get to the last edge and you notice that these two edges are both flipped. This is actually OLL parity. It's just in a different place as you would expect. This is the same as OLL parity on a 4x4. Just on a 4x4 you don't have to, the middle piece in there so you don't notice the edges flipped until you're solving OLL. But on this one you notice the edges flipped before you even begin the 3x3 stage. So to solve this, we're just going to turn these layers and do the same algorithm as the 4x4. So R prime U2 L F2 L prime F2 
R2, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, F2, R2, F2. And now you can just go ahead and solve it like a normal 3x3. Three three. This is not the best turning 5x5 five by, five, by the way. And now you can also get that same parity on a 7x7. Seven seven. So you're like solving a 7x7, seven seven. you get to the 3x3 three three stage and you notice that these two edges are flipped. And it's not usually the middle ones that's flipped, but it's usually the two that are, or three, whatever, that aren't, that aren't in the middle that are flipped. So like these two are flipped. And to solve this, we're just going to use these two layers and do the normal 4x4 parity algorithm. So it's R prime U2, L, F2, L prime, F2, R2, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, F2, R2, F2. And now you can just go ahead and solve it like a normal 3x3. Three three. So that algorithm works on any cube, whether it is a 4x4, 5x5, 7x7, a 2x2x4, or even a 13x13. 13 13. So you can be solving, I, I shouldn't have to make a tutorial on how to solve a 13x13, 13 13 because if you're solving one of these, you pretty much know how to solve any big cube. But let's say you are solving the 13x13, 13 13, and you solve, you have 11 edges solved, and you notice that one of these edges is flipped. Actually, six edges are flipped. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're not gonna count five edges flipped like that because we don't usually count this one in the middle because we can't flip that. So we're gonna count all the ones on the side. So we're going to do the same algorithm as a four by four, but with a 13 by 13, this cube is so big that it is incredibly easy to get lost. So be careful when doing this algorithm. So we are going to do three, these three layers. So it is R prime times three, U2, L times three, F2, L prime times three, F2, R2 times 3, U2, R times 3, U2, R prime times 3, U2, F2, R2 times 3, and F2. And so you want to be really, really careful with that because it is really easy to get lost and mess up the centers and the edges. So you want to be really careful on cubes like this. That's why cubes that are this big are really hard to solve. Because actually if you get a pop or something like that in the middle of the parity algorithm, there is a 50% chance, if you're not good enough, there's a 75% uh, chance even that you could actually just mess up the centers and edges and forget where you are on the parity algorithm. You keep doing a bunch of different moves trying to fix it and it just gets worse and worse and then you end up having to solve the 13 by 13 or whatever all over again. And you don't wanna do that. So what you should do is think about where you are in the algorithm while you are doing that. So, and if you get a pop or it gets jammed or anything like that, something stops you. And then just try to remember where you were on the algorithm and which side you were facing so that you don't get lost. And anyway, that is the end of this video. And I hope you figured out how to solve parity on cubes like this. 
and I will see you in the next video.